morning. Uh, we're going to continue on this uh, morning with Luke chapter 16 and the parable of the shrewd manager and explain a little bit more of the context uh, and of what I really will go deeper into on Sunday. But I wanted to give you a little bit of that today because I know you've probably been wanting to know well, what on earth is, is going on in this parable and what is Jesus saying. So let's read it again. Uh, chapter 16, verse 1. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is it I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first one, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take, your bill, take the bill, sit down quickly and make it 450. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are sh more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it's gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Okay, so what is Jesus talking about here? Because it kind of seems at one point where the, what we, normally we would assume to be the, the villain or the, the bad person, the bad example in the parable seems to be now commended. And then Jesus is drawing parallels from him saying we should be that way with um, it be shrewd like him. But so what is he saying? Okay, obviously we're not supposed to be dishonest. We know that. But but shrewd, yes. There's another place where Jesus says that we should be as shrewd as serpents, but harmless as doves, right? So not doing wrong, but not being naive and, and gullible and stupid, but be smart and shrewd in how we deal with and how we advance the kingdom, right? For the for the sake of the kingdom of God. Jesus was incredibly brilliant and smart. Uh, and, and we saw that and how he dealt with the people that were coming out, out towards him. So uh, here's what's happening uh, in this parable, which I'll, again, I'll unpack on Sunday. Um, we see this parable and we think money, right? Financial money, financial capital. But there are different types of capital, right? There's human capital or, you know, human resources. There's human capital, there's financial capital, there's intellectual capital, there's physical capital. All of those things are different types of capital to, in God's economy, different things that we have that we can invest. And we naturally think, first of all, when we're thinking about investing, we think of money. But there are different types of cap capital. And I want to show you, and, and just so you know, this comes from, um, from someone who mentored me uh, and wrote a book on this parable called Oikonomics. Um, and he brings it out, and I'll be referring to that. Uh, it's, it's Mike Breen, and the book is Economics. But he brings it out, and he says that there are five capitals that we see here. So the guy is about to lose his job. Again, he's not dumb. He's just dishonest, and, but he's shrewd. He's smart. Um, so he's not incompetent. He's just not trustworthy. So he says in, um, let's see, verse 3, the man says to himself, what shall I do? Right now, my master, is, my master is going to take away my job, my financial capital, my way of making money. He's going to take that away from me. I'm not strong enough to dig physical capital. He's saying, I don't have the physical capital to do manual labor, to be working uh, outside digging ditches and holes. I'm not strong enough. I don't have the physical capital for that. So I can't rely on my physical capital to make money. And then he says, I know what I'll do. Boom, the light bulb. What's that? intellectual capital. He has an idea. So I, I know what I'll do. And what is that intellectual capital? Uh, I will, I will, um, so, I, so that I can have, so, I, so that when I lose my job here, when I lose my financial capital, people will welcome me into their homes, relational capital. So he's like, okay, I need, I don't have the physical capital to get a job or to work doing manual labor. I'm going to lose this job. And I need to make sure that I'm able to, to, to be hired and find work somewhere else. So he says, I know what I'll do. That's an idea. That's intellectual capital, which he has a lot of. He's shrewd. He's smart. He's got a lot of intellectual capital. And he gets an idea. 
I need to build some relational capital. I don't have a lot of other friends right, right now. I, I need to make sure that I have some friends that their homes and their doors and their businesses will be open to me. So what I'll do is I'll use you know, the, 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 my master's financial capital. It wasn't really his, but I'll do that. I'll use my intellectual capital. I'll cancel some of their debt, and then that will indebt them to me, and they'll give me a job. So which, that's all what this guy is doing. Now, again, the, the parallel for us is not that we should go and be dishonest. What Jesus is saying is, okay, just like that guy realized how to invest, how to leverage the capital that he has to get what he needs or wants, which is another job, what's the capital that God has given you? What are the resources that God has given you? For some, physical capital is, is, is really high on you. you. You have great amount of physical and athletic ability. How do you leverage that for what really matters? Not for money, right? Athletes can be making a lot of money and using their physical talents to make money. But the best athletes are the ones who leverage their ability, not just to make money, but to change and impact the lives of other people. Um, intellectual capital, right? The, the, you can be incredibly brilliant and smart, but the best of, of, of the, the, the intellectual people are those who don't just use their, their intellect to better their own lives, but to better the lives of other people. And it goes on and on. So, um, you know, the, the uh, relational capital, physical capital, financial capital, some of us don't have a lot of financial capital. Right? Some of us, we're not rolling in the dough, but some do. And they use their financial capital, not just to better themselves and have mansions and boats, and, but the best of those who are wealthy are those who invest and use it and leverage it to improve the, the lives of others. So what is it that God has given you? What are the, what are the, what's the capital that you have that you can invest in the, in the kingdom of God, which is, again, what we read about 1 Corinthians 13, right? The, what you've served and how you've served. If you have built up mansions for yourself on earth, if you've built up wealth for yourself, if you've built up all these things for yourself, then that's wood, hay, and straw. It, it's going to get burned up in the end. But if you've invested, if you've leveraged what God has given you, for the kingdom and for the sake of others, then that's gold, silver, and precious stones. I'm referring to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So what, what do you have? What, is God, how, what, what, have, what resources has God gifted and given to you? And how are you using those to invest into the kingdom of God? Think about that. And um, again, remember to, to uh, post, like, share your ideas and your comments, and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. God bless.